Hello friends, welcome to Crimson and Gold the Art Studio. My name is Pooja Singhal. I'm an artist. I graduated from Delhi College of Art. I went on to do my post-graduation in fine art. And we'll be learning Pichwai painting today. Pichwai, as the name suggests, are the background paintings used in Sri Nathji Temple. It's a very auspicious painting and we'll be learning it in a contemporary way. I hope you find it useful. So we have a set of things we need, poster colors and some fine set of brushes, triple zero, one and two, some round and flat brushes. Let's begin. So we'll draw a square of nine inches by nine inches. And as I start my drawing, you can see that I'm starting, leaving the space of around one inches on one side. And we'll start with the face of the cow. So I've just drawn a slant line. I'll be doing slowly, you have to follow with me. It's not going to be difficult. So with simple shapes, you can just give the face of the cow. So as I'm drawing the horns, you can see the little loop that I have drawn below it. It is actually the cloth that is wrapped around the cow's horns. So the second horn is also going to be drawn like this. Use a sharp pencil, don't draw very harsh lines. So I've made one ear. Now we'll be making the second ear. So the small piece of hanging below the cloth. So for the nose we'll draw a spiral and eyes are going to be bow shaped and long. So we have the face. So for the neck now, that's the little hump. Always in a pitch where we make this hump in the cow. So I'm making the leg first. As you can see, I have left the leg area. So leave at least a one and a half inches gap. So a little wavy line I'm drawing. This is going to be the second forelip. This is curved towards inside. So I'm adding the jewelry. So whenever we are adding the jewelry, in the end we will make it a loop so that it looks like it is being worn over. So give that curve in the end and in the beginning like this. So it gives a 3D effect. Make the bell and make some hangings. like small bells or maybe 
some pearls so make them equidistant So let's make the hind leg. Make sure that it goes down till the same length as the foreleg. Slightly broad at the base and just make a small division. So the abdomen. the fourth leg so the tail is going to be pointed can add some design on the body of the cow I'm not very happy with this shape of the foreleg so I'm just trying to make it correct so while drawing keep that in mind that if there is any portion that you don't like you can always just erase it and rectify so your lines shouldn't be very dark Now that looks better. So I'm making one more fold in this cloth. So like the impression of the hand I'm making some design. So this again looks very auspicious on the cow. We Hindus worship cows and it's Lord Krishna's favorite. So just make it more ornamental. So cow and lotus are two favorite subjects of Lord Krishna. So in Pichwai painting you see that the cows and lotus pattern and peacocks. These three are mostly repeated, repeatedly used. So I am making a lotus now. So I'll just make with five petals. If you want, you can make it with more petals, seven petals, and uh, I'll show you one of that type as well. So for the cow, you can just practice the drawing once before you start on the final paper. These traditional forms of art are done very really patiently. So 
so I am placing quite a few lotus so you see you can make a seven leaf lotus as well like this seven petals and this is how we are going to make the leaf So I'm doing it very slowly. I hope all of you are able to understand with this. Okay. So just make the upper portion and then the cup like lower portion of the leaf. Let me raise this extra line. stalk is a little curved want you can take the lotus and the flowers up to the top also and just keeping this much height so that's totally your own imagination and liking Some portion is hidden behind that lotus. So this one is behind the tail. So I'll make a small bud. There's not too much area here. I think that looks fine. So let me add one more.
so I'll make a boundary boundary gives it a very complete look so we are going to add a double boundary to our painting it adds colors gives it a complete and finished look so just make a boundary line so this is less than a centimeter mm is the thickness I am using so once our drawing is complete we will start with painting so be ready with the paints poster colors brushes and a rough cloth and a tumbler of water so let's start painting a pale white I'm using so to make this color I've just added little bit of yellow a pinch of yellow to the white and I'm just applying a flat color in the body first so this we are going to call it a base color so the base color we choose is always applied first we are not going to choose a very dark base color it is always advisable to use a light or a medium base color so that when we work on it with lighter shades or darker shades the effect is good if we have a very dark base color then to work over it is very difficult so you can also make a more yellowish cow or even a light brown cow I am using white this time but it's totally on your own choice you can make a yellow one too so gradually just cover the entire body with the base color so since this is the base color and we'll have to work on all the details later on so it doesn't really matter if uh, you know the edges we have some something left in the edges but try to be as close as possible try not, not to leave any patches So very patiently, slowly, you will have to just do this. Make sure that your brush has a good tip. I am using a round brush. Six number. You can use a six or seven number brush. color should also not be very flowy just the right amount of water not too watery so 
it's only the outer part of the ear I'll be painting. I have left that little portion inside. So I'm just going to add that later. So some wrinkles appear when I'm putting the paint. That's because of some water and moisture. So as the paint will dry up, these wrinkles will also be less visible. But of course with too much water it will become too soggy. The paper will lose its strength. So now I'm going to add some shade. So with a fine brush I'm just using white with a little pinch of black so I'm just adding that grey. At the edges to give it a more finished look. So for all the skin folds and all the borders we are going to just add a little bit of this grey shade and softly we are going to add the strokes so that it doesn't appear to be uh, only a line it just blends. Okay, just touch with the tip of the brush. So the quality of brush really matters when you're doing your painting. For all the fine work, I would suggest you use a triple zero. And for this kind of work, you can use a zero brush also. This, this gray is darker than the, than the one I used previously so that means it has more black so we made this small ornaments also in the cow's legs so doing an outline makes it easier So for the horns I'm using the same shade, dark grey. I have left the tip of the horn. So it's a simple cow. We have to just use a little bit of ornamentation. Just giving it that curved look, you know. Okay, 
just for the lighter gray just add this with one stroke it just gives makes it look round So I hope this much is clear now let me add some more shades So I'm using this orange at the bottom of the leg So I have just left that ornament and you can call it the anklets and I'm just adding this yellowish orange. Okay, first we'll apply the color then we just try to blend it. So to blend it in just use a lighter shade and just add some strokes so the two colors will seem to be merging with each other. So see it's not that difficult so I use that same white oh I'm so sorry so you can see I'm a clumsy painter I think artists are a bit like that So on the hump also I will just add a touch of orange. Okay again I am going to just use a lighter shade to make it look blended. So with some grey I am just adding little bit of shadow. So shadow plays a very important role because the finishing comes when you add a little bit of shade and shadow. So I added some dark grey and some white. Just try to blend it in. Again the same thing. First the dark grey and then little bit of white so just blend the two so 
suddenly when you start adding the dark shades the white starts looking brighter So with the dark orange I am making these. So these are all the hand impressions. So just gradually make each of them. So let me just make an outline in all of these. I'm trying to keep my book straight for the recording otherwise usually I keep it little tilted so I'm also having a little bit of difficulty Okay, so first make this much and then in the small circles that we've made on that hand impression. I just want to fill up some orange. So all the ornament I'm going to do with yellow. So first put a flat color, flat yellow color on all the ornaments. So I am using a cadmium yellow here. So we'll add some soft colors for the ornaments and then we will just add a little bit of highlight to it. So even for the cloth I'm using the same shade. So 
be gradual use a brush with a fine tip so i'm just applying flat color no shading right now at the edges you can just add a little darker shade only where it starts and ends only on those edges you can just add some dark color i've used flat though So I was looking for this and it's a round tip tool to make the circles. I'm using this to color the small circles which we have in the handprint and the same thing we can use to make the ornaments. So see how simple it has become. You just have to apply the dots and they are nice and round. So if you have this kind of tool it's very good and if you don't have such a tool then you can do this with the tip of a pen or with the back side of a brush. So I am using another to make the circles of the ornaments so just dip it each time and just cover the circle so slowly just dab you have to only dab and you get the perfect finish finish is very difficult with the brush if you don't have this kind of a tool you can always get one they are easily available at the stationery shop so they come in a set you can have dots of all small and big sizes
I am using pink for the outline. You can mix white with some crimson and just make the outline. Then with the lighter pink you can just fill up. So for small areas this trick works well but when it's a larger area then the blending becomes a little bit difficult so we apply a flat color and then add some shading. This is how I do. You can try, try it. outlines for this I'm taking black I'm taking a triple zero brush you can do black outline or you can do a dark brown outline as well if you are not so confident with the brush then you can use a micro tip pen at the end of the painting to do the outlines. Must try in a rough paper first how good you can how much you know you can use the fine brush. After completing the outline here, I'm just trying to do the eyes first. So make the outline, make the eye fold and the eyebrows and the black of the eye and just to fold underneath. For the nose, we are going to make a spiral.
so gradually we are going to just do all the finishing with a fine brush and now I'll start with the lotus so I'm applying pink color crimson plus white so again just as we did in the cow I'm applying a flat color first So like this we are just going to paint the lotus start with the shading we will just add at the edges I'm going to add a darker shade of pink again with mixing crimson and white so you have to slowly keep blending by repeated strokes of the brush also at the folds and at the edges of the each petal just add little bit of darker pink and blend it with the base color just with the either with a dry brush or with a plain brush without any paint blending is not up to the mark you can just add a little bit more of a lighter shade and just make it look perfect again after applying this you will have to blend it in so it all looks one it should not look patchy small details we are just using a fine brush flat brush and big brushes we'll use only for bigger areas and only for a flat background and even for the base color you can use a flat brush but for all shading purpose and all detailing purpose use a fine brush for the outlining use a triple zero so a good set of brushes is very important when you are painting. It can make a big difference. You don't have to buy very expensive brushes. The local made brushes are also very good you don't have to go for big brands also but you have to see when you are buying you have to see the quality of the brush if the tip and the bristles are at the end they are soft and they are merging with each other and they are sticking to each other then it's a good brush if they are scattered then it's not good
सो माई टेक्निक इज़ वेरी सिंपल एंड ईजी टू फॉलो एंड आई होप यू गेट गुड रिजल्ट विद दिस इट्स अ बिट स्लो as you have to work over and over on it to get the fine details but it is easy so for the lotus and for the leaves we are not going to use a dark outline like black outline we'll just use the same colors as we are using to fill up only the dark shade so i'm outlining the lotus with a dark pink only won't be using black here only we can use after we finish the background and everything we can just add a little bit of dark color that i'll show you later so like this you can just complete each lotus and you can see that the leaves are also done in the same way just a flat application of green color and over it with yellow outlines i'm adding the details you can see once again so just make all the outline first have to be careful that your hand is clean because when you are place, placing your hand on an already painted surface you don't wish that it gets spoiled so you can even place a piece of clean paper under your hand so that the already painted area doesn't get spoiled so carefully do all the outline first and now with the bigger brush just fill it up with a flat color so painting is a matter of patience at least this kind of art you have to be very patient if it's a modern art then it's different you can just go on and on and do all sorts of strokes while it's still wet and you know you can mix and match but when we are making a traditional painting you have to be very patient and try to be slow because here we are just you know using all the blending and all we want a flat application of color we don't want it to look patchy and this also gives joy to the artist it's not that it is slow then it becomes boring i think it's slow but it is also very creative and very satisfying to make this kind of art
so with lemon yellow I'm adding these lines so first I'm going to add these lines outline details to all the leaves So you can see that poster colors are not transparent. So even on green I'm working with a lighter shade like yellow and you can see that it covers up very properly. So now to give the depth, I am adding some black on the inner side. So to enhance the cup shape. So in all these leaves, you have to add the dark shade inside. You can blend it in. You can use a dark green or a black. Both look equally fine. So this music is also like our painting. It's changing its pace but it's slow and soothing. So with this kind of detailing, the leaf looks more or less complete. So even on the bud and the stem, I'm going to add a little bit of detailing. So only on the outside, I'm just adding a little bit of black to make it stand out more. So now we are going to color the background. I am using a Prussian blue. So for each small area just do the outline first and then try to fill up. Since we have so many flowers and so many intricate drawings, it's going to take a little bit of time and patience. But I'm just waiting eagerly for the final result. So the same shade I'm using for the outline, Prussian blue.
so choice of colors is always yours you can use your own choice of color depending on what colors you like and where you want to put the painting so accordingly you can just choose the background colors but make sure that you choose a good color combination you can try it on a rough piece of paper just the patches of colors to show to see how how they look together how the combination is going very well or not because if the color combination is not good then doesn't matter how much you work hard on the artwork you will still not get the perfect effect So slowly you take areas one by one and do the outline and fill it up. So it's a little slow process as I'm repeating again and again. And try not to have patches when you use the bigger brush. even when you see patches while it's still wet it doesn't matter because when it dries up sometimes the patches disappear on their own if you still see patches the best way to avoid them is to mix all the paint that you will need for this artwork at once so all the Prussian blue that you will need you just mix it in a small bowl at once and that very paint you keep applying so once it's mixed properly and it's the same shade there are very less chances that it will give patches if you are using only directly from the bottle then it's more likely you can get patches or if you mix small amount of color each time for each portion try and avoid that take a little extra paint whatever you think you will be needing take a little extra paint and mix it properly in a bowl and see that it is the right consistency and then start applying and it's always good to add just a pinch of white in whatever shade you are using when it is for a bigger area so that gives it a matte effect and that will makes it look less patchy So these are my own small tricks which I have developed over the years as an artist. I hope they help you. So I have varied interests. I am doing contemporary paintings as well and I do these traditional paintings as well. And I also love to do portraits. So if you have any interests of uh, different kind of artworks that you wish to learn from me, so do write in in the comment box so that I can make a tutorial for you. So if you find this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe my channel. are more fond of brighter colors then you can even use a royal blue background that looks nice too 
and you can use a double shade royal blue on upper side and navy blue on the lower side and then you can just make it blend so even a shaded background will look very nice i'm using a simple navy blue background in this though So the same process has to be repeated each time just adding the outlines and then just filling up the flat sheet. So I have just skipped a little bit but if you wish you can just pause if you are painting with me then you can just pause the video and you can complete your work and then restart. It's actually quite simple and similar to what I've been doing right now. So it's in the same fashion we are just going to complete the entire background. like this now the background is done so I'm just enhancing the leaves with a yellow highlight so wherever you think it's missing you have to add the highlights you have to add the outlines so on one side of the stalk also I'm just adding a little bit of this highlight or you can say outline Because while covering with the blue, I have just covered a few of these outlines. So I am just giving it a touch up. Now I am doing the second border. I have applied a paper tape masking tape so that it comes out neat inner boundary is already quite visible with the blue only for the outer boundary I'm using a masking tape so at the same time I'm just trying to rectify a few flaws that I can spot On one side of each stalk, I'm just adding a yellow line to make it look bright. On one side, there is a dark outline and on one side, there is a yellow outline.
so for the boundary again you just draw an outline near the next to the blue so little extra I have to wipe it out you can just scrape it off with the back side of the brush like I just did so after completing the yellow I am just adding a red outline so I am doing this with a felt pen I am adding red so there are three primary colors I am using finally for the background it's red yellow blue and I'm just using a plain red felt pen for that if you have a micro tip pen you can use that and to make the lines use the back side of the uh, scale don't use the right side of the scale use it upside down so that it doesn't touch the paper and if it won't touch the paper it won't smudge the color as you can see if you don't use it upside down what will happen is that once you lift the scale it will take it will just absorb the color in it and it will make it look very smudged Just making it a double triple outline so that it looks fine and thick and easily visible. So actually in order to keep the paper straight for recording purposes my lines are getting a little bit disturbed. But anyways this painting is for you to learn. See how I'm just using the scale upside down. So just make it thicker or if you have a thick pen you can directly make with a thicker pen. Make sure the corners don't run out. As you can see now, our cow and lotus pichuai painting looks complete. I'm happy. How about you? So little more finishing you can add here than there. I can see that a few things like a little black outline or a little yellow line which can be which can still be worked on but on the whole the artwork is complete and these little flaws are also important after all it's hand painted and not a print So if you like the video, do leave a like and subscribe to my channel Crimson and Gold Art Studio. You can also visit my website crimsongold.in. The link is in the description box. You can leave comments. If you like something and if you wish to learn something, you can just send it in the comment box. Thank you for watching.